So power steering is something we just take for granted. I remember the days when cars didn't come with power steering and you had to have massive biceps and they generally fitted cars with great big bus like steering wheels to just lighten the load and enable you to steer them. And the thought of putting wide wheels on those cars without power steering was just a weight that was too much for people to bear. So we tended to stick with skinny tires back then and just put up with it. But with power steering, you've got so much more control over the car. But how do you know when your power steering pump is starting to play up. What are those warning signs? Just knowing those early signs of a faulty or a failing power steering pump can just flag up things that you need to look out for so you can address them before they become a problem and before it breaks down. Because when a car that has power steering actually has a failed power steering pump, steering is so much harder, if not impossible for some drivers. So it really is something you want to nip in the bud and address early on. So let's look at some of the typical symptoms that happen when the power steering pump is starting to fail. So first of all, the power steering pump takes the motion that you're making on the steering wheel and amplifies that. There's a lot of different systems that manufacturers have employed, and some of these just don't give you any feedback at all. The control is taken over completely by the car's power steering, and others are a little more complex, and they feed back a little bit of feedback depending on the speed you're going at. So often when you're parking the car at slow speeds, you've got very little feedback, and the steering wheel is relatively light, enabling you to get those tight maneuvers to get into the parking space. But when you're on the road at speed, it gives you a nice amount of feedback so you can actually feel the corners and enjoy the car. So you're probably watching this video because there's something weird going on with the steering. So we're just going to go through some of the symptoms. We're going to start off with the least common problems that you may have noticed. And that's often a good place to start diagnosing the faults and problems. And then we're going to work right up to the most common ones, which is generally when the problem has advanced to the point that it's becoming really obvious and you really do need to get something done about. So the power steering system uses a power steering fluid. So many systems in the car, like the brakes, use brake fluid to just drive everything within the system. So power steering fluid is quite a complex formulation. You wouldn't be just chucking water in there. Please don't ever do that. But the power steering fluid is designed to avoid compression, avoid sucking in water, and just really keep everything inside the pump and the mechanisms running efficiently and prevent corrosion from building up. So if that power steering fluid itself has started to degrade, you may notice the color starting to change. And that can often be a sign that things are starting to wear inside the power steering mechanism and that you may need to get something addressed because that power steering fluid should stay relatively clean for the majority of its lifespan. So moving on to some of the signs you might notice, a stiff steering wheel response. So perhaps it's intermittent, maybe it only happens at slow speeds or conversely, it may only happen at high speeds, but you've just noticed that the steering response response is somewhat different from time to time. Things are getting a little harder. So that can be an indicator that the power steering pump or the power steering system is starting to degrade and not work as efficiently. When that happens, that's really your warning sign to start looking at the fluid and the other components within the steering system and just make sure that you've not got a looming problem and you can get that addressed quite early on before it becomes an expensive problem and you've maybe damaged the power steering pump, whereas that could have been salvaged and the degradation that's happened elsewhere in the power steering system is putting excess pressure on that pump, eventually wearing it out and you're going to have to go and replace it. So when you've got pumps spinning, if there's air bubbles in it, the pumps can spin too quickly. You might even notice a burning smell coming from the pump. So always investigate burning smells, fresh smells coming from your engine. Always make sure it is your car. So drive to a different location and keep an eye out or a nose out for the smell. And if you've got a consistent, unusual or different smell coming from underneath the car, get that investigated. So it's an outside chance it's the power steering pump, but I have known them to start to burn out and you do start to notice that burning smell as they start to go out. So one of the more common symptoms is a whining noise. So you tend to get this when you've turned the wheel, perhaps you're on full lock and you've noticed the whining noise starting to escalate from the steering system. Um, maybe it happens when you're on partial lock or 
only when you go left or only when you turn right. There's often a very narrow band of problem area initially, and then it widens out and you start to get this noise all of the time. So that's an indicator there is wear and tear within the steering system. So that could be the pump. It could be some of the more mechanical aspects of the steering system, just creating extra friction and the power steering system is trying to overcome extra friction and it's not managing to as effectively as it was. And that's obviously putting extra strain on the power steering system itself. So really, these noises are your first major warning sign that you need to take it to a garage, take it to a specialist or strip it down yourself. Just inspect it and replace those worn components. So what can you do if your power steering pump is starting to fail in your car? Well, the first obvious thing is just to change the power steering fluid. Just make sure you've got fresh fluid in there and that it's getting the lubrication it needs and there are no air bubbles within that system. And in some cases, that's just enough to negate or avoid the problems from escalating and getting worse. But there often is other problems elsewhere in the system. If you're the sort of driver that likes to have the radio on really loud when you're driving, make it a habit of just turning it down initially and just listening out for those steering noises. So maybe as you're parked up, if you steer fully to the right and then fully to the left, that can sometimes indicate those early noises that you get from a failing power steering system. And that will give you a red flag to look out for as something you have to address in the near future. So you can't really beat maintenance. Power steering systems are complex. If you neglect them, problems do get worse. So often wear and tear in the system itself can put extra stress on the steering pump itself, which is quite an expensive component within the power steering setup. These often have a knock-on effect and they can escalate. So if you can nip the problem early in the bud, you avoid it escalating and becoming a very, very expensive repair. And sometimes all that's needed is a little bit of lubrication of the outer suspension steering components just to make sure they're moving freely and you're not putting that extra load on the power steering pump. After all, that power steering pump is doing a lot of work. So you're not necessarily going to notice anymore that things have degraded because it's trying to compensate for that extra drag that it's experiencing. But eventually it will just give up on you and you will have that expensive repair to address. So thanks for watching. Please boot the like button because that really does help us to get out there. If you've not subscribed, please do so. We've got lots more videos coming up to help you to diagnose problems on your car before they escalate into very expensive problems. So we're saving our viewers and our readers a lot of money just by providing knowledge that people have passed on to me over the years. And it's certainly little tips that have saved me a lot of money. I've lined this video up for you that you should find interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video.